Alright guys, welcome back. Today I'm finally going to do my full overview and review and my thoughts on the bike since I've had it of the 2023 Ducati Panigale V2. I've had this bike for a few months now. It's got 4,000 miles on it. I've ridden it through freaking ice storms, rain storms, uh, cold weather, warm weather, long rides, short rides, twisties. I mean, it's been all over the place. I keep it super clean. I maintenance it very well. I uh, just did the chain actually the other day. Let's do a cold start because it has not started yet today. Let that fuel pump kick on. No worries. This thing starts up every time. I've had people say that their Ducatis don't start. Yeah, so the review of the bike, ridden this thing through all types of different terrain and uh, situations. I've got caught on a rainstorm just last week. Y'all probably seen that video. Uh, so it was about, I was, it was so cold I was getting an ice warning. The bike will give you an ice warning. Uh, that's how that's how cold it was out here. So it was about 38 and then it started to rain um, Later in the afternoon. So when I went to work in the morning, it was like 38 or something like that, which was pretty cool I got the ice warning there were spots on the highway which were wet and I could feel it was a little slick So I got to work, but then when I got home when I was leaving for work at you know six o'clock at night it was literally like it wasn't downpouring, but it was enough to be like, damn, this sucks, you know? It was like a little bit more than a misty type of rain. And on the highway, you know, flying up tractor trailers and, and everything, and I, and I wanted to film it, but I didn't want to ruin my GoPro. So I got, I waited till I got close to my apartment, and then I, that's when I showed you guys. But it was a little warmer, though, that by then. Um, in Texas, the rain kind of makes it, like, get a little warmer. It doesn't get cold. So it warmed up to about 43 when I was riding home, but it was still, oh my God, it was treacherous. The next day, it was the same temperature in the morning, and as I got about two miles from work, it started uh, ice raining, and I was on this. And let me tell you right now, the traction control on this motorcycle is absolutely phenomenal. The ABS is phenomenal. Everything about this bike in those kind of conditions Really, really top notch though. Shout out to Ducati for the really, really hard engineering and hard work that they did to put together such a really good street bike. This is, in my opinion, because listen, and we'll talk about it when we get on the road. We'll talk about it when we get on the road. Let's go. Let's throw a leg over and I'll see you guys when we get to uh, Valente. This is not the Lime Creek Road yet, but this is a beautiful view and a ride I always like to take. There's actually a ton of traffic out today and I'm not really sure why. Maybe there's just a lot of people out here for the holidays or what, but it's freaking Wednesday morning, or Thursday morning. And like, there's just a lot of people out here, but it's getting overpopulated out here, man. And uh, that's the one bad thing about Austin. It's really nice to live here, but everybody's coming here and it, it's getting just overcrowded and uh it's a bit annoying especially because there's people here that aren't so fond of um uh, lane splitting <laughs> and they're probably not from here and uh anyway we're not gonna get into that So if 
you guys noticed, I uh, the reason why actually in that last video that my camera was facing down is because I actually flipped it upside down on my helmet because I was trying to find y'all a better camera angle and I just misshift it. <clears throat> we'll talk about the shifting on this bike in a in a few minutes, but uh, that was my fault, not the bikes. Um, so if y'all noticed, I took off the hard city sticker here because I noticed in a lot of the videos with that there, it's like in your peripheral when I get down in the tuck. And I was really trying to get a better camera angle, but this is just how y'all are going to have to deal with it. I mean, I know some of you like to see the hands, but I can't even see. I could barely see my fingertips right now out of my peripheral. So you're just over top of this bike. It's a very like an aggressive feel like it's comfortable the way the ergonomics are it's really nice um, but you're over top of it so this is just a really nice ride this road is I really enjoy coming out here and I'm not gonna push it I just want to take a nice easy ride go about my day um, and talk to you guys about the bike and uh, I mean, honestly, it's just been such a great experience. Every every time I get on this bike, I, I, it's just hard not to get a smile on your face. All in all, guys, if you're going to spend $21,000 on a motorcycle, this is definitely the one to get, in my opinion. Like, sure, the CBR 1000, awesome bike. I'm sure it's very capable, does a lot of cool shit. It's really fast, but it doesn't look as good as that bike. I mean, honestly, the only time you're not going to smile on a bike like this or be happy or in a good mood is when somebody, you know, throws their car in front of you or opens a door in front of you or... You! Like I said, the V4, the V4S for sure is like way over the top, like a super laser, laser. I mean, those bikes are so ridiculously fast. You don't really need them on the street. This thing, it's not like it's, this thing is... It's, it's a freaking leader bike, so it's fast as shit. Does something to endanger your life on a motorcycle. Um, you know, it, it's just, anyway. But other than that, it's, you are going to be a happy camper on this bike. It's just such a good, good riding motorcycle. And then when your outfit looks as cool as this on this bike with this super freaking rad hand painted Arai Corsair X. I mean, my helmet is, I get so many compliments on my helmet. Where did you get that? I'm like, I did it myself with freaking markers, y'all. The ergonomics are really good on it. And I, I like the way it feels. Um, I get a pressure point right here in my palm because I, I I'm a back here kind of guy I don't know what it is and I dig into my handlebar here so it kind of that's kind of my deal there but that's that's my thing I actually ride like this I used to ride with a closed grip on the throttle now I've I've learned to operate it a little differently so I kind of do this kind of roll my hand and palm and keep my hand on the brake on that front brake because you just don't have the time to do it it's just literally you have it you don't even have that's how fast things happen on a motorcycle you don't have time to bring your finger up to the brake you have to already have it there so but there are some things i don't like about this bike but it isn't nothing to do with the power or speed or anything it's really just the heated grips the fuel gauge I'll be honest with you, that's it. The heat, I wish I had heated grips, I, I, I wish I had a fuel gauge. The way I read my fuel is you're looking at it right there. I have the trip setting. Uh, once it gets to about 80, 90, I put gas in it. That's that 80, 90 miles I put gas in it. Depending on 
if I was like really floor in the motors like really punching it I might be somewhere in the 70s before I, before the fuel light comes on but I use the trip light uh, the trip setting as my fuel gauge and which many many people do I think everybody with this bike does that so uh, but yeah, that's really the only thing uh, that, that I dislike. I mean, it's just so good. I get it. Maybe like for some of you, the whole thing, maybe you don't want to get into the whole Ducati uh, fanboy type of deal. And, you know, you could say the same about Honda's, like Honda fanboys, whatever. A bike's a bike. I've never been uh, like at anywhere where there's like a bunch of Ducatis around. I've had this, but I've been in these situations, especially at the dealership where somebody come up to me and like, hey, you bought the baby one. It's like, even Ducati owners know that this thing is no joke. It's a really good street bike. Um, the, you know, just those little bit of a features. But this is a perfect street machine. Like, if, if you get something, like in my opinion, the V4s, the R1s, like those are track weapons, man. They, those bikes are great on the street. No doubt about it. They're awesome on the street because they're so fast and they maneuver so well but they're over the top fast wow you don't need to go that fast on the street this bike it's fast but it's not going to be as fast as they are on the track you know i mean a really good rider could put it down on this bike no doubt about it. it's going to be fun on the racetrack but this is a street machine this this is a perfect absolutely perfect street bike I mean, it really doesn't get any better. The power is perfect. Uh, it is. It's really fast. It's fun to ride. It's nimble. It's just, man, I, I don't know. In my opinion, this is all my opinion, obviously. But there's no, uh, th so uh, one thing that I'll change, and we'll, we'll talk about some of the changes that I'm going to do. A lot of it's cosmetic and just personal preference. You know, um, it, other than that, it's not anything that you, like, necessarily have to change. You know what I mean? Like, you could keep the bike how it was factory out of the box for as long as you want, and it'd be fine. Um, I would personally recommend you change the uh, mirrors <laughs> on it, because the mirrors are terrible. But make sure you, if you're going to replace the mirrors on this bike, make sure you go and get good ones. Because if you don't get good ones, you're just going to end up in a worse position than you were before you had them. Um, and the reason why the stock mirrors suck is because they're up here. They were up here where the turn signal is right now. And you got to kind of do this like maneuver of your arm to see what's directly behind you. And it's really annoying. And when you get to like 90 miles an hour, 80, 90, which is like highway speed on this bike, cruising highway speed, perfect. You know, like it's not too much wind in the face. It's not so much wind at that point where you have to tuck. Because in my opinion, when you get to like 110, you're gonna need, you're gonna need to tuck in because there's just so much wind at you, you know? Um, and this bike, you don't have to tuck far. The windscreen deflects it up nice. If you want to really get down in there, you can do it. I tend to just do like a half tuck type of deal, and that's about perfect for me. And that's that's how I do it. If I'm really going, like if I was like in the one part of the video I was doing 160, um, that is when I got fully in there. And I'll and the way to do that is I just get back farther into the seat, and you get all the way in there, you know. And um, it's really quite nice. It's just, it's you don't even really feel like you're going that fast. And I don't know how guys do them speeds in between cars and whatnot. That's a mistake of mine. I just made right there, hitting that yellow line like that. I, I'm still very, very new at twisties and riding motorcycles like this. And I haven't done this in probably a, over a month. I haven't been out here in a while practicing. It's just been cold and rainy, guys, you know? So... Uh, what else? And yeah, there is, somebody made a comment last time I was on this road about the tar snake. There is a lot of it, but it's diagonal. Like there's some of it going this way, but a lot of it's, you know, going across, uh, across and not 
long ways, uh, which is a big difference when you're hitting tar snake, right? If there was a tons of it going this way, then that would be problematic and probably not be really rideable, to be honest with you. Um, but the tar snake is, it, it kind of ends there anyway. Like this part of the road, it doesn't really have it. These people out here pay a lot of money to live out here. So, believe me when I tell you, they, they fix the road up when they can. They also wash it. They clean it because they know a lot of bikes come out here and they don't feel like dealing with somebody going off the edge and have to get... So, when you... a lot, of, I'll tell you guys. Um, when you crash your bike out here, uh, you get airlifted out. You don't get... No ambulance is coming up here. It's too far for a lot of places. Uh, you're, it's, a lot of guys will get airlifted out. <clears throat> it's just, you know, you, you crash down in these mountains, man. It's just like you're in a lot of trouble. So this road's very, very dangerous. You gotta really take your time and know it. That's why I'm not pushing it. I'm just kind of talking to you guys. Like usually when I do this ride, I'm uh, quiet, right? You don't really hear anything. And I haven't been on this road in a while, and I don't. It's it's been raining, so there is definitely washout. But I do want to get another bike, and it's probably gonna be either the V4 or the. Uh, BMW M1000R. It's going to be between one of those two. But I also... Like, for me right now, like, this bike... I'll probably have this bike for about another year before I get something else. To be honest with you. Only because... And it's not because I don't like the bike. It's because there's... I have to make my channel... I, I My goal on this channel is to re review motorcycles and have multiple bikes. But man, it's just such a sweet ride. Like, oh wow, this big house here is almost done. Really nice house. This one up here is my favorite. Way up top. Absolutely beautiful. And no, this is not where Joe Rogan lives. Joe Rogan lives off Lake Travis, which we are technically at, but he literally lives down on the lake, not up in the mountains. This is a scary, I haven't been on this road in a while. Cause usually I'll like, know which part of the road I'm at to know where to avoid, like that center part where all the, well that looks cool right there. But, yeah, there's, so, a couple of things that I want to change on the bike. For one, the rear sets. Um, my my foot always slips off the rear sets of these motorcycles. And I also, like, these Alpine Stars SMX V2s, they were my favorite boot. I love, like, oh, I can't, I can't really, I actually find myself wearing my TCXs more than I wear these because this boot always gets caught. The Velcro... It sounded like air was leaking, but that was, must have been something else in the trees or something. I'm like, shit, did I just lose a tire? That would suck. Um, but yeah, the Velcro on these boots, this is why I want new boots so bad. Look at this turn, y'all. Oh, I can't wait to get an exhaust on this bike. Like, the way this thing sounds stock is pretty good, but... With an exhaust... Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. It's coming soon. I'm just trying to play catch up here. But yeah, these Al Alpine Stars SMX V2s, it's a good boot. But uh, not on this bike because the suspension that sticks out of the side, the Velcro always gets caught in it. That's why I want new boots so bad. And I am dying to get those Dying Easy, uh, the ones with like the zipper on the side or whatever they are or I think it's in the back I think it's in the back I'm uh, absolutely obsessed with them I, I can't I freaking need those things man because the, these get caught they get caught all the time and, I, and it's just annoying but the rear sets on this bike I want to change because I don't like the grip um, another thing that I'm changing because of my false neutral issue on this motorcycle and um, it just happens I don't know. I've been trying to dissect the reason, reasoning for it. 
but it does false neutral. It doesn't do it all the time. It's like a very tricky situation it gets itself in to when it pops in the neutral from first to second instead of just going into second gear. It'll do this neutral deal and it's fuck man. I'm like, damn it. It always does it at like the worst time too. And so one of the resolutions I have come up with that, or I haven't really, but the guy at the Ducati dealer who looked at it recommended that I do GP shift on this bike. And I was like, ah, you know, that seems really confusing <laughs> to relearn myself how to shift a motorcycle after doing it for, you know, basically my whole life of ever riding a bike. And especially within the last two years since I've had sport bikes and now a super bike. So, uh, you know, but then I start thinking about it. I'm like, well, I could do it. You know what I mean? It's not going to be difficult to learn. I'll probably figure it out in five minutes. You know what I mean? And it'll be like, wow, never, never go back to this uh, from this. So I am going to change it to GP shift. I'm working on trying to figure out what parts I need to do it. I think it's just a, no a knuckle on the top that I need to change. Um, but we'll see. I, I think Duke a bike or some other company might actually make one um, but I'm looking at the Duke of bike rear sets or the uh, Litec rear sets I just haven't made up my mind and uh, the Litec ones are a thousand dollars everything's very expensive for this bike so it's not a cheap motorcycle to upgrade and you don't want to put cheap parts on this bike Like I said, I think, you know, as far as like if you want to start on this motorcycle, I think you could do it. You know, honestly, you could, somebody who's never rode a motorcycle could put this thing on street and probably learn. I, I wouldn't probably recommend it, but if you must have this bike and it's like, I don't want to switch bikes in a year, I just want to get the one I want and you've never ridden before, you could absolutely learn on this um, because it does drop power mode and it is a substantial difference when you have this thing in street mode in low power and smooth I mean it takes forever it doesn't get rid of any horsepower so don't let it fool you it just changes the way it gets there it's a very slow progressive movement into the power so if you're in second right now and you really punch on it which I'm not gonna do because it'll go up in the air but like we'll say we'll say we're in first right if you're in first gear and you punch it it's not going to go that fast up in the second gear it's gonna be like a more of a like a like a slow progressive roll okay so that's the difference it, it kind of gets rid of that snappiness and that's what I've noticed now when you're going in high speeds it in uh, sport mode it's not like the bike's gonna restrict to 120 miles an hour it'll still go to 160 it'll just take forever to get there uh, but it's almost you're going when you're going that fast in that mode it almost doesn't make a difference it, you almost don't really feel it that much other than the fact that it doesn't like if I'm doing 120 miles an hour and I'm in fourth gear um, and I want to gun it i'm gonna get to 160 in like less than three seconds probably you know where if i was in something like street mode and i was doing that it wouldn't be as quick to get to that speed but it's a very fun bike to ride i mean if you have roads like this where you live i don't know where some of y'all live i would assume most of you probably don't or live somewhere near a road like this um, God bless you if you live near tail of the dragon I want to ride that road so freaking bad and I plan on doing that very soon there's a road out there I've been wanting to hit too I just seen it and there's other roads all around here that I need to explore and check out um, I actually have family in town right now so I'm not gonna be on the bike too long today but I really wanted to do the review with you guys and um, the, the way we're going to take the channel in the future for, for stuff is to just go explore Austin on bikes and just see what we can find. Like roads like this, man, it's just so beautiful. And there's so many of them. There's so many of them. It's, 
there's no limit out here man to like what you can see and do it's just so big and you got san antonio and houston dallas it's awesome i love it i love texas i love being a texan uh, I, I think for me, there may be some things that might separate it from the from the CBR 1000 that may want me you want to get the CBR 1000. I was gonna get that bike until I seen this one, and I was like, it just looks so good. The nose, the way the tail comes to the point, the way the rear tire is a little longer than the tail, uh, the height, the rear header, how thick that thing looks there, um, the red wheels with the white, the little red inlays. It, it, it's just an amazing motorcycle, man. And it, it's so good looking. And I think that's part of it, like for sure, for me. It's like, I didn't want an ugly bike. I, I thought the Ninja 400 was pretty good. It was an okay bike for what it was, but it was ugly as sin. I mean, the way the shape of the motorcycle looked, especially when you look down, when you look down on the Ninja 400 through this area, it's all like open because the bike's so wimpy. Like the, the swing arm on the Ninja 400 is like a stick. You know, the little skinny back tire. I just I just didn't like it uh, in that aspect. I loved learning to ride on that bike again. I already knew how to ride a little bit, but after 10 years, you know, you kind of, you know, do it. I picked it up pretty quick, but I, I really loved and enjoyed getting back into the motorcycle world on that bike i think it was a perfect bike for me to pick up as a as a bike to get me back into the game and i think this is a really really good solid choice for a second bike and if you really want to push yourself you can get it for a first bike i don't recommend this but you can do it because you could drop the power modes this is why you don't see r6s anymore and stuff like that you're not going to see these lower bikes you're going to see 400s made and uh, maybe a zx4 and then uh, leader bikes that drop power modes. Why, are, why is a manufacturer gonna make four different bikes when they can make one big bike and drop it into a slower mode? You know what I'm saying? Instead of, because when you, when you have a 600 or a 750, that's it, that's what you're getting. It's limited at that point. Um, when you have a 1000, it's super fast. And then if you want, you can drop it down. That's what makes these bikes really great for anybody to have, no matter if you've ridden or whatever, I mean, it really depends on how far you want to push yourself as a rider. So uh, for me, everything about this motorcycle is, is really awesome. There are upgrades that need to be done to it to make it more, uh, more efficient, better uh, feeling, better ride experience, better everything. Um, and some of those things, like I said, rear sets are a must. I want to get those uh, new grips, uh, all new controls. Uh, Olean suspension, Olean's dampener, everything that's black is going to be carbon fiber. Uh, black windscreens coming and the radiator covers coming. Um, getting rid of reflectors and red Marchesini uh, wheels um, and the arrow slip on. And then hopefully one day I can get the titanium Makropovich exhaust. Uh, clear clutch cover, frame sliders. Um, and, and, and that's it. That's really all you need to do to it but you don't need to do any of that stuff. If you don't want to, you can leave this bike just how it is. Now this bike ain't stock. I have bar end mirrors on there, obviously from Aero Precision. Really nice, they don't vibrate. I don't care what anyone says. These mirrors do not vibrate. You can be doing 150 miles an hour, look out of those things and they'll be right where they're at. With that being said, that vibration does go to your hand. Rhino Moto does make a bar end knob, weight, bar end weight that will attach to these mirrors i have yet to get them they're like 60 70 bucks uh so there's that um and then the only other thing i want to upgrade after this is the brake system that's like probably going to be last uh wave rotor probably new calipers um and all new brake lines so carbon fiber um and all that and reservoirs uh and just other than that i'm just going to keep upgrading it little things and make it nicer like i want to change all the bolts to i think like an adult color like purple or something just something like to make it pop a little bit differently every you know uh, i feel like a lot of people do the white wheels on this and they were changed on black i think the red wheels makes it and i'll never get rid of it so everything that's white and red will stay the same everything that's black will be carbon fiber and then a new seat that's the direction i'm going with it but uh, yeah, so anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe, shop at Raven Moto, get yourself some gear. Today I have on my badass all black the Onyx jeans. And I'm not wearing my Raven Moto hoodie because I'm out on a twisty mountainous road where, you know, it's uh, a lot more of a risk. So 
got my titanium Ducati Dionysi jacket on. But anyways, like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching all the videos. Um, I love it, man. I love that you guys comment. I love the respectful comments and the new subscribers. Please keep your ignorant comments to yourself, especially about my last situation. You weren't there. You don't know how it all went down. Um, and for me, you just can't, you can't back down to people who are trying to cause you harm. Uh, yeah, I could have went about my day, but at the same time, so could have he before he opened his door at me because I was never bothering him or anybody to begin with. So that's the big thing about it is it's like, why would you put yourself, why would you literally put yourself in a situation where you're going to anger somebody like that? Because I don't care who you are. If somebody tries to knock you off your motorcycle while you're riding it in between traffic, you're going to be pretty pissed. And if you're not pissed off about it, uh, then you're not a biker. You're not a fucking biker. So that's all I got to say, guys. Like, share, subscribe. All the links will be below, especially Patreon. Please don't forget about the giveaway on Instagram. That link will be below for the directions how to do that. And I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.